Hello again, everyone. It's Vince for from tradewinds.com, and this is our update for Friday, April 5th, 2024. Uh, again, I'm doing this update on the Friday. Uh, I'm going to have a busy weekend, so I thought I'd, I'd just recap the week now, and then we'll we'll get back at it on Monday. Today, <clears throat> excuse me, an interesting day on the markets. Uh, we had the employment numbers due out first thing this morning at 8.30 a.m. They came in much stronger than expected, 303,000 compared to uh, 200,000 that the market was expecting initially. Futures sold off, but then the wage growth number came in, was lighter, and um, things rebounded. And we actually had a pretty decent day. The Dow up 320 points, while the, uh, sorry, the S&P was up 55, and the NASDAQ up over 200 points. Now, does this change anything? No, not really. Uh, we had a huge down day yesterday. We recovered part of that today. If you look on the daily time frame, we're still below the 20 um, here. And, um, you know, the weekly, the monthly, still look good. Whether you're looking at the Dow, the S&P, the Nasdaq, still look very strong, right? But uh, those daily charts, all three remain below the 20 here. So for now, we sit and wait. What are we waiting for? Well, either a move back above the 20 and a new long setup that would set up most likely another leg higher here, or we wait to see if we turn around and take out today's low. And if we do, we are likely going lower, at least in the near term. So that's where we are in the market. This kind of environment is a kind of environment where we do not have all three time frames aligned. We do not have the daily, weekly, monthly um, all showing us the same thing. So what that means is that we trade with smaller size. That's all. We're a little more careful during times like this. You know, obviously, if the market is rolling over, the daily time frame is going to roll first, followed by the weekly, followed by the monthly. We're not quite sure if we're there yet. We've been below the 20 before and recovered and just continued on with the current trend that may be a, the, the case again it may not so let's wait in a day or two you know early next week we're, we'll likely find out but for now we uh we proceed cautiously a couple of of stocks looking good recently uh gm we talked about in our in our chat this afternoon just because of this range that you know if you look back um in time on on gm I mean, most of its history here is within a defined range. And now we are popping out of that range, which which means a lot less overhead resistance. So it's getting to the point now where we may see another run like this. So it's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not quite ready just yet. What we're looking for is a close above here and follow through. So, you know, it tried to get above here, failed. When here, did not follow through, failed miserably. We'll see if it can get back above there and finally follow through. If it does, we'll have, um, you know, many, many weeks, if not months of upside on GM. Another interesting one today was Tesla. And really, it was kind of a wild day for Tesla. We opened um, here. Let's look at the numbers. We opened... At 169.08, we went as low as 160.51 and then rallied uh, to close at 164.90. Uh, I'll show you the five-minute chart here. This was interesting. So there was a report out early this morning, you know, right around 11, that Tesla was going to, um, you know, forego plans to come out with a lower price model. And then Elon Musk sent out a tweet saying that that was false and the stock uh, com you know rallied hard here in in 5 minutes um and then kind of just you know slowly uh dwindled away throughout the afternoon here now tesla uh, you know still looks extremely bearish to me so yeah it was a wild ride but again not a whole lot has changed. It looks very bearish. Looks like there's plenty of downside potential here. So GM looks decent for a potential move sending up to the long side. Well, Tesla remains a solid 
short to the downside. 